we call emotional intelligence our secular cousin. Uh, emotional intelligence is a concept that was, the term was coined in the 1920s, and basically describing the ability to read one's emotions and to manage them, and also to read the emotions of other people and to manage your relationships using that knowledge. Uh, the concept didn't go very far until about 1985. A man named Dan Goleman wrote a New York Times bestseller called Emotional Intelligence. And uh, it, it's an excellent book, uh, one I highly recommend to people. And he really goes a lot more into the neurology of the brain, why the brain does the things it does. Um, wonderful insights, wonderful information there. But the EI model, and a lot of people are now teaching this, uh, it's very popular in corporate America. Politicians are learning it. Physicians, med schools, business schools are all promoting this. Um, and there's a lot of valuable skills you can learn in it. The big deficiency in it is it doesn't include God. The classic EI model is all focused on human behavior and human relationships. And in fact, the downside is they, they call it the dark side of EI. People that really master these skills can become master manipulators and for self-serving and to the harm of other people. So what relational wisdom does it's, it's going to use a lot of the same skills, reading body language, understanding emotions, all those things, but it's all built around two very dominant goals, which is the God awareness, God engagement. Who is God? What is he up to? How do I respond in faithfulness? And so the big difference is the focus of relational wisdom is on God, and the driving motive of relational wisdom is the gospel itself. How our lives have been redeemed and transformed by Jesus Christ and how everything, including our emotions, can be taken captive, as Paul would put it. How do we take our thoughts captive for Christ, our emotions captive for Christ? And that's because of the gospel. It gives us the power and the motivation to do that.